Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss about 60 Hz TV versus 120 Hz TV. Should you actually upgrade uh, to 60 Hz TV to 120 Hz TV or 60 Hz monitor to 120 Hz monitor? So first we have to know about refresh rate. What is refresh rate? A TV's refresh rate is how many times the screen refreshes itself every second. It's different from frames per second, which defines how many frames the video source displays uh, every second. The refresh rate is important for motion handling as a higher refresh rate generally results in smoother motion, but it's not uh, always the case. It's, uh, it's also important to not get confused with marketing terms that often uh, inflate the refresh rate. The I, I explains the difference between uh, 60 Hz and 120 Hz refresh rate, how it affects the image and how companies will try to trick you into thinking the TV has a higher refresh rate than it actually has. Even though I don't see it, uh, the TV is constantly refreshing itself every second. A refresh rate defines uh, how many times per second it draws a new image on the screen and it's written out in Hz. A 60 Hz refresh rate means that the screen is refreshing itself 60 times every second and 120 Hz is refreshing itself 120 times every second. This is different from the frame rate which is how many times per second the source sends a new frame. So if you have a source that's displaying uh, 60 frames per second, you always want your TV to be uh, refreshing itself 60 times per second so that uh, the refresh and frame rate match up otherwise motion may look blurry. And when it matters, the refresh rate affects motion handling. The more times the display can draw a new image, the better it is for fast moving content. Modern TVs either have a 60 Hz or 120 Hz refresh rate. Most high end TVs have a 120 Hz refresh rate, but it doesn't mean they are inherently better at motion handling either. The response time determines how good motion looks. A quick response time means that motion looks clear while a TV with a slow response time leads to motion blur. Response time and refresh rate are indirectly related as a 120 Hz panel is expected to have a better response time than a 60 Hz panel. But it's not a guarantee since not all content will automatically have the same frame rate as your TV's refresh rate. There are also ways uh, TV increase the frame rate to match up the refresh rate, improving the appearance of motion. When display, uh, displaying 30 or 60 FPS content, uh, 60 FPS video played on a 120 Hz TV should look almost identical to the same content less played on a, a 60 Hz TV. In case like this, the TV either adjusts itself to match the refresh rate of the source, which effectively turns it into a 60 Hz TV, or it simply doubles every frame. Higher refresh rate doesn't produce less motion blur. With a higher TV with a higher refresh rate doesn't produce less motion blur. Since both of these TVs have a very similar response time, 60 FPS content results in an almost identical picture. To better showcase this difference, I compare two TVs side by side, a 60 Hz model and a 120 Hz model with similar response times. TVs in slow motion in easily compare each individual frame. While 120 Hz TV doesn't uh, inherently produce better motion, it can provide a few advantages over a standard 60 Hz TV. One of the most important advantages is the ability to play back content that is meant to be displayed at 24 FPS, which is often found in movies. Most TVs can simply lower their own refresh rate to 20 Hz when the content is 24 FPS, but some sources such as Chromecast output video at 60 FPS, even if the content is 24 FPS. This means that the TV's refresh rate remains at 60 Hz and motion won't appear smooth, which is an effect called judder. A 60 Hz TV has a trouble removing 24 FPS judder because 60 isn't a multiple of uh, 24. To display this type of content, a technique known as 3 to 2 pull down is used basically at 12 of the 24 frames repeat 3 times, while the other 12 repeat twice, totaling 60 frames. Not everybody notices this, but it causes some scenes, notably uh, panning shots, to appear juddery. However, 120 Hz TVs have an advantage here uh, because they can simply display each frame five times since 
120 is a multi, uh, multiple of 24. There are few sources that t uh, display 120 FPS such as Xbox Series X and PS5 and having a 120Hz TV helps display this content at its maximum frame rate. While it's rare to find content other than games with this frame rate displaying 120 FPS has a significant impact on the perceived motion. As you can see, uh, content looks much smoother at 120 FPS that, uh, than uh, 60 FPS on a 120Hz TV. With the release of HDMI 2.1, there may be more 120 FPS sources available in the coming years. This new HDMI standard allows TVs to display 4K images up to 120 FPS, whereas HDMI 2.0 allows up to 60 FPS. This means that 120 Hz TVs may slowly become the norm. Another place where 120 Hz is useful is if you enjoy the motion interpolation feature found on TVs, uh, which is also known as the soap opera effect, it allows the TV to guarantee frames uh, between existing ones, increasing the frame rate to match up to the refresh rate. Most TVs have this feature, a 60Hz TV can interpol 30fps content while a 120Hz TV can interpolate 30 and 60fps content. This is why a 120Hz TV is an advantage over 60Hz since it can interpolate more types of content. There are other ways to produce a similarly clear image as a 120Hz refresh rate. Many TVs these days have a feature called black frame insertion. Essentially, the TVs display a black screen between each frame, which most people can't see, but it can also make the screen dimmer. On most LED TVs, this is achieved by adjusting the flicker frequency of the backlight, which results in the backlight behind turned off or uh, turned off for half the frame. On OLED TVs, which don't have a backlight, this is done by inserting a black frame in between each frame. Persistence blur occurs when your eyes move past a static image, such as each static frame that makes up moving content with black frame insertion. The static frame is present for a shorter duration, so the length of the persistence blur is shorter. Unfortunately, though, uh, not everyone can stand the flickering, and some people may get annoyed after a while. A TV is only as good as the content you are playing and unfortunately very little 120 FPS content actually exists with the new HDMI 2.1 standard gaming consoles like the Xbox Series X and PS5 support 120 FPS but there isn't much online content available at such uh, high, high frame rate. I have compiled a couple of lists of common entertainment sources as well as their respective refresh rates you can see. Let's talk about variable refresh rate. A source's frame isn't always constant, especially in games. It may drop and if that happens, it can lead to screen tearing because the frame rate of the game and the refresh rate of your TV don't match up. There's a feature called variable refresh rate ER, that aims to match the refresh and frame rate on the go. So if the frame rate of the game drops, the TV automatically lowers its uh, refresh rate as well. This is only uh, possible if both the TV and the source support VRR. There are different formats of VRR with AMD's FreeSync, NVIDIA's G-Sync and HDMR, MI Forum, VRR being the uh, three most common types. G-Sync is usually reserved for monitors, but some TVs are compatible with it. High-end Samsung and LG TVs have FreeSync and support for HDMI Forum VRR is starting to grow on HDMI 2.1 TVs. As for compatible devices, the Xbox Series X supports FreeSync and HDMI Forum VRR, while the PS5 should receive an update in 2021 for HDMI Forum VRR. TV companies will often market their refresh rate in ways to make it seem like it's higher than it actually is. A company like Samsung uses the term motion rate. The motion rate on a 60Hz TV is 120, while the 120Hz model has a motion rate of 240. They effectively double the refresh rate to come up with this number and there is no real explanation as to why it's marketed like that. LG uses true motion, Vizio uses effective refresh rate and Sony has two terms, motion flow exert and X motion clarity. These marketing numbers don't really mean anything and you need to check the TV's specifications. 
to find the real refresh rate. Let's talk about flicker frequency. LCD TVs are lit by LED lights and most TVs use pulse width modulation PWM to dim the backlight. What this means is that the backlight turns itself off every few seconds so it doesn't get too bright. It's not visible to the human eye because of how fast the frequency is flicker uh, frequency like refresh rate is measured in, measured in uh, hertz because we want to know how many times it flickers every second. If the flicker frequency doesn't match up the uh, refresh rate or frame rates, it can create some image duplication. As you can see, the uh, motion on the LG UN8500 has image duplication because its backlight flickers at 120 Hz. This is double the 60 fps source. However, the Sony X800H has a flicker free backlight, so there is no image duplication. The motion blur is caused by a slower response time. So in conclusion, a refresh rate defines how often the screen refreshes itself every second. Although I can see the TV draws a new image from the source every few milliseconds. Generally, a higher refresh rate TV results in better motion handling. But it's not always the case as there are other factors that come into play with motion. It's important that your source's frame rate and the TV's refresh rate each match in order to create smooth stutter-free motion. For most people, a TV with a 60Hz refresh rate is good enough since there isn't much 4K content that goes past 60fps. However, 120Hz TVs with HDMI 2.1 support are beneficial to gamers as they allow for higher frame rates. So I will say 120Hz TV is better and you should upgrade 60Hz to 120Hz TV on monitor. So that's it from now. If you like this video, please subscribe and press the bell icon for future notifications update. Thanks for your time.